With all the influencers, celebrities, entrepreneurs, and success stories on social media, it can be easy to start growing the desire to do more, be more, and have more, sometimes without even realizing it. But the truth is that we're not all meant to be influencers, celebrities, or business owners, which is a good thing because as I've come to realize, it's okay to just be average. In fact, when done right, it can even be good for your mental health. This is because the desire to do more, be more, have more is often rooted in the belief that what and who you are and what you have isn't already enough. It's rooted in the desire to prove that you're worthy of being loved. After all, you've earned it. You've shown the world that you were smart enough, strong enough, capable enough, resilient enough, popular enough, deserving enough to have the things you have, whether that be your wealth, fame, or stats. On the flip side, to be okay with being average is to learn how to accept and appreciate all that life has to offer, including and maybe even especially the small things, the mundane, your coffee in the morning, your commute to work, the weather, time with friends, small talk, you name it. It also means that you've recognized that you already are enough without first having to prove to yourself or to the rest of the world that you are. You're enough because you exist, period. And to not desire to chase after bigger, better, stronger is a reflection of that, as long as you're not avoiding it out of fear. Fear of failure, fear of the unknown, or even fear of success and being seen. There's all kinds of fears that can hold us back from stepping out of our comfort zones and chasing our dreams. But to be honest, you didn't need me to say that because people always focus on the fact that you're not chasing your dreams because you're too afraid to. But what most people don't talk about is that you can chase your dreams out of fear too, because you fear being ordinary. You fear having a boring life. And as I've already said, you fear you're not enough. I know this because just recently I realized I was afraid of being ordinary. Just recently, I came to see that a lot of what was pushing me to do YouTube, start my own businesses, learn how to make websites, teach myself video editing and animation and so on was fear. I know, these all sound like positive things, but because I was doing them not out of a love for them, but rather because of the fear of the implication of not doing them, this always kept me in a state of suffering. Every video that flopped was another missed opportunity to stave off the dreaded ordinary life, and another confirmation that I was destined for average. Every script I wrote was in the hopes of breaking through once I published it in video format. Every moment that passed with my subscriber count frozen at sub 1000 was additional pressure to make it work, make it better the next time. It turns out each time each of these things happened, I was being met face to face with my fear of being ordinary, which explains the desperation I felt for not progressing fast enough, even though I don't actually want to be famous or make a lot of money. I just wanted to prove to myself that I could do whatever I set out to do, but subconsciously it was because I didn't think I was already enough, already worthy, already deserving. What I unwillingly unwittingly was looking for was external validation to fill the void left by the validation that I was unable and maybe even unwilling to give myself. What I was looking for was acceptance. I wanted my voice to be heard, yes, in part to help others, but also because I wanted to be acknowledged. I wanted recognition. Which is ironic because this channel is all about going slow, following your intuition, and making sure you're intrinsically motivated rather than extrinsically. But that just goes to show you how tricky the ego is, because even though I'm aware of these things and am an active proponent of them, it still took me two to three years, if not more, to realize that my main motivators were being fear, a sense of lack, and a deficiency in self-wealth, rather than genuine passion and interest for what I was doing. I mean, there's some of that too, definitely. I love visual arts, and I've come to really appreciate editing and the power it has in communicating ideas. But that only made it hard to decipher why I was having such a hard time enjoying the process. I thought, why am I suffering so much if I chose this for myself? If supposedly I like talking about this stuff and I like writing and editing and everything else that goes into posting on YouTube. The thing is, like I said before, the ego is tricky and it does a great job of obfuscating the influence it has over you. It hides behind things like your desires and your interests and to make itself less evident. It uses your intuition as a puppet. It changes and manipulates your thoughts to shroud its presence. 
But there's one thing that will always give it away, your emotions. At least they do for me, because if the only thing motivating me to do these things were my genuine interest and curiosity, then I'm 100% certain that all of the work I've done so far would have felt more like play. I would have found more joy in it. I wouldn't have had to force myself or convince myself to sit at my desk every day and hammer out some more hours of productivity. The fact that I was suffering was a clear sign that I wasn't in alignment and that therefore there were reasons outside of my interests and curiosity that were pushing me to do the work. But just because you can identify that something isn't right doesn't mean you can identify why. And this is what took me so long to do. Because since I was suffering, all I wanted to do when I wasn't working was distract myself by sleeping, spending time with my girlfriend, or watching yet another YouTube video for, quote, inspiration. <laughs> Even though I could see myself spiraling, the emotions were so strong that I couldn't break out of it. And even though I knew that what I needed were some moments of quiet reflection and time with myself, I opted out of these things every time the opportunity presented itself to do them. Luckily, despite how clever the ego is, it has one downfall. It doesn't know limits. So it will just keep pushing you and pushing you until one day it outs itself and you're able to see it and its tricks for what they really are. Which, with enough practice, is enough of a break in the illusion to gather your senses and reclaim your power from your ego. This is the point I'm at now, and even though sometimes it feels like I'm trying to do the impossible by trying to find the intersection between embracing and accepting average and pushing beyond my comfort zones, limiting beliefs, and fears, I know I can do it and I know it'll be worth it. Because even though I've come to realize that it's okay to be average, I also believe it's okay not to be. The point is, whether you do or don't want to stay average, just make sure it's not out of fear. As one quote I found while reading about the fear of being ordinary puts it, on a clear, cloudless night, you don't have to climb the highest peak to be able to see the stars. Simple but profound, because it reminds us that as long as it doesn't cause you inner turmoil, you're just as easily able to get enjoyment and satisfaction out of life by being average as you are from the pursuit of greatness. If you like this video, then you might also like the video I'll link in the anchor. In it, I talk about how to harness the power of joy, play, and your desires to effortlessly get things done. Before you leave though, comment down below letting me know how you identify, average or not, and what are your reasons for being that. I want this to be a space where we could all share with each other, so I really look forward to reading what you have to say. As for now though, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.